Well, hello, everybody. Who's glad to be in church today? Anyone? Come on, make some noise if you got some energy. It's great to see all of you. I want to welcome those that are worshiping online to all of our guests that are here in person. So glad that you're with us. We're in week number two of a four-part series we're calling Imagine, where we're learning how to unlock our ability to see the future that God wants to make happen for us, the work He wants to do in us. And we're basing this all off of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, which says this, Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that's at work within us. Here's what that means. God will blow your mind this year if you let Him work in you. According to His power that's at work within us. So this could be your greatest year if it's your greatest year spiritually. So today we're going to learn how to see God work in our life like never before. How many of you got some things in your life that you want to change this year? Anybody? Anybody got some areas like in your personality that you're trying to get better, you're trying to grow in? How many got some character flaws you're trying to tighten up? How many got a lot of character flaws you're trying to tighten up? <laughs> Brother told me I was trying to lose 20 pounds, Pastor. This year I said... How's it going? He said, I only got 30 more to go. <laughs> like, bro, you moving in the wrong direction. I want to talk about those difficult changes today, those stubborn areas of your personality, of your character that you can't seem to change. I mean, you're righteous, but at the same time, you're ratchet. Come on, anybody? <laughs> you worship, but you still worry. You love, but you still lie a little bit. One moment you're powerful, the next moment you're pitiful and petty. God's Word is going to help us make the, the tough changes, and we're going to learn how He uses our imagination to do just that. You ready for God's Word today? Come on, somebody say yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. You can follow along on the church app. If you don't have that, get it. It's, it's a good tool to have. If you, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, I'm reading from the New King James Version. That's what that NKJV stands for. Let's read it together. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being what? Transformed into the same image. Transformed into the same image. From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What's going on here? Paul's talking about how man before in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the old agreement that God had with mankind, man could not look upon the glory of God. Moses was able to get into the presence of God. He'd come out, his face was glowing, radiating. He would wear a veil over his face because the people could not look upon him. It was just, wow, it was amazing. In verse 16, not in your notes of this chapter, it says, when you place your trust in Christ, when you become a believer in Christ, it says the veil is removed. Come on, do I have any believers in the house today? So the veil has been removed. What does this mean? It means that you now have access to the glory of God. And you behold the glory of God. You reflect the glory of God. And it says it's in that moment, in that context, that this change, this transformation, it's how it's possible. And Paul uses a word that means to look at a reflection. You're looking at God. You're seeing God. Now, obviously, he's talking about the eyes of your heart. I've never seen God with my natural eyes. Never seen an angel. Never seen a piece of toast that looked like Jesus. <laughs> to be quite honest, I don't believe in any of that stuff. Never saw Mary crying on a picture on the wall. That's nonsense. We don't need that kind of stuff. Now we have access personally into the presence of God. 
the glory of God. So he's saying, you have to see this with your mind's eye. On the inside. To imagine means to form a mental image or a concept of. So I'm imagining God. As I'm imagining God, as I'm looking upon the glory of God, transformation takes place. You see, transformation is not the result or the product of more information, the accumulation of knowledge. We are the most informed people that has ever existed on the planet. We have more spiritual information than ever before. Everybody's got a podcast. Everybody's got TikTok. Everybody's got a YouTube channel. There are more books, articles, sermons, guidelines, how-tos, helpful tips, books. There's never been more. We are overeducated, yet we are under-transformed. Because information will not transform you. Transformation is not behavior modification. And a lot of people try to water Christianity down to that. Well, I just need to stop cussing. (laughs) Or I need to be a better person. Transformation is not about becoming a better person. Transformation means you have become a brand new person. Not a better, brand new. Like never existed before, brand new. Born again. God's not trying to just make you a better version of you. He's created a whole new version. You were now, you were once dead. Now you are alive. So transformation, I believe, is a result of an anointed, God-inspired, spiritual imagination. And I believe when you begin to see things correctly, that's when change starts happening. You see, your destiny is not determined by how God sees you. Your destiny is determined by how you see you in light of how God sees you. Your mirror determines your meaning. What you're looking at. A lot of you are looking at the wrong mirror. You made up a mirror. Like in the morning, you look in the mirror. I can tell most of you did. (laughs) And you're looking for what's not right. And a lot of us look at our lives with the reflection of like what we think is right and wrong. And then we start feeling less than. Guilty. Ashamed. I don't measure up. Some of us look at a mirror that someone else is holding for us, trying to be what someone else wants us to be or what culture says we should look like and how we should live. And we're trying to, we're not sure. And then some of us are looking in the rear view mirror and we can't step into, into our tomorrows because we're consumed with yesterday. You keep beating yourself up for something you did. Hey, let's be honest. We've all done some stupid stuff. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. Including me. But that's not who you are. It's what you did, but it's not who you are. You can't look in the rearview mirror. You gotta, we got to start looking right. Like, like we got to start seeing things right. Here's why it's hard to change. And there's a lot of reasons that people come up with, but I boiled it down to four. Why is change so hard? Because we've been this way for so long. That's what we say. I've been this way for so long. Man, I've been like this forever, man. I'm just high strong. I'm just anxious, nervous, or I'm shy, I'm shy. Yeah, shyness will keep you from walking through the door God opens. Keep saying that. Keep believing that. This just runs in our family. We got hot blood. We got a little, we got a little, ah, we get mad. We're Latina. We're... <laughs> We're Irish. We, we, we drink a lot. You know, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Like, there's things that people just say. It's like, you, do you really believe that? We've been this way for so long. Or I tried to stop, but I, I changed, but I, I just fell back into it. 
Here's another reason why we, we can't change is because we identify with the defects. I'm shy, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a workaholic, I'm an addict. Come on, I'm an overeater. I'm just big boned. Come on, somebody. <laughs> what you believe about yourself becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. When the children of Israel were given the promised land, God told Moses, send in some spies. Twelve of them went in. Only two came back with the good report. The, the ten, the majority, went in and saw the grapes. Wow. Then they saw the giants. And when they saw the giants, and they looked at the giants, you know what they saw in themselves? Were grasshoppers. That's what the Bible says. They didn't have one conversation with the giant, but they said, we saw the giants and we looked like grasshoppers to them. Therefore, God said, all 10 of y'all and the rest of you, ain't none of y'all going in. None of y'all are going in. Here's what it lets me know. God's plan for your life dies if you don't believe him. Your perspective can paralyze God's plan for your life. Forty years wandered in the desert. They all died except the two, Joshua and Caleb. God said, come on, y'all now, y'all can come on in. Why? Because y'all can believe. Here's another reason why we find change so difficult is because we like, we like the payoff. We like the payoff of our dysfunction. I talk to people all the time, been addicts on substances, and they're like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I like how it makes me feel for that long. Then they feel guilty the rest of the time. I know I shouldn't be yelling at everybody. It's so obnoxious. No one wants to be my friend. But they keep yelling. Why? Because it gives them some semblance of control. And some of this they learned back in their childhood. Some of this stuff we learned to survive, but now it's self-defeating. And you know it. Here's another reason why we find change hard. Because Satan is fighting. Right. Satan's coming against you. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, I was going, I, I, I really felt this. I was like, I, I, need, I, need to, I need to have more of the fruit of the Spirit. I'm always thinking that about my life. Like, I need more of God's fruit in my life. And like, one of the areas I need to work in was patience and kindness. Especially when I'm driving. <laughs> Come on, can I get a witness in the house today? And I remember doing, I'm doing, I had worship music on. Praying, I'm not even praying. In the middle lane, not even, in the middle, the cruising lane. Just doing the speed limit. Some dude comes up behind me, he's all behind me. And then he comes, like, I'm like what's, this, what's going on? I mean, I was just, I was just trying to worship God. <laughs> comes up next to me and I'm like, He's yelling. He's raving one finger up at me. I said, I don't think he's saying, bless you, brother. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what happened next. But let, let's, because I don't really remember. But all I'm saying <laughs> is every time you try to take a step in faith towards God, the Satan's going to come against you. Yes. Don't let him stop you. I believe when you get a spirit-inspired imaginations, you not only be, you you don't just believe that change is possible; you believe that change is guaranteed. Like this is for sure going to happen, because you believe, hey, if old things have passed away and all things have become new, I truly have been changed on the inside. Here's what I want you to get: you got to see this. What you see, not how hard you strive, will determine what you become. What you see. Remember, look at the text again. We all with unveiled face. Christ has removed the veil. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. God's starting to change me as I'm looking to Christ. Anybody ever heard the, um, you guys heard the saying, monkey see, monkey do? I, I didn't even know, like, what are, where did that come from? I thought it was just things parents said about their kids, you know, big bro little brothers imitating big brother or 
son did something like dad, but actually it came from a series of experiments that were done in the 1980s and the 1990s where they hooked up these electrodes to these monkeys and their brains and they would, they would show the monkey, op- they would, a human would open up a banana and eat a banana and they would see this monkey's looking and watching all this and these things start firing up here in the front part of his brain. Well, they show him how to, like an ice cream cone, like ice cream cones do not exist in the jungle. But that monkey would see, and now you even see it on TikTok, monkey coming out of, the, out of a tree in another country and grab somebody's ice cream and go back up on top of a tree and eat it. <laughs> They're called mirror neurons. We have them too. Now, I'm not saying we evolved from monkeys. What I'm saying is that God made our brains this way. To be able to look and see and imitate an intended action. You start imitating and it, like you emulate, you imitate, and you're starting to do this. My kids used to do this with us. Like, I, you know, you ever do things, parents, and you wonder if your kids are really watching? Like, I, I will wash my hands in the bathroom at a restaurant, dry them off, and then I grab a paper towel and I go to the door. And I use the paper towel to touch the handle. Why? Because some of y'all nasty. <laughs> you ain't washing your hands. Let every head bowed, every eye closed right now. <laughs> We're going to get this right. Now, I remember my little one. He probably four or five. He, we, I remember him watching him one time. He reached over and grabbed that. Ooh, I was so proud. He had his paper towel there. I was like passing on these obsessive compulsive disorders. <laughs> One generation to the next. Let it be, Lord. What am I saying here? The more I behold Christ, the more I become like Christ. You want to change this year? Get your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12 says we do this by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. We keep our eyes on Jesus. He's the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Like our faith begins with Jesus. But your faith isn't just for the sweet by and by. Your faith is for now. Right now, in the grind of life, God's changing you as you behold him. You may be sitting here, I want to change. I think I can change. I'm ready to change. Let me just say this. You'll never change on your own. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, you'll not succeed by your own strength or by your own power, but by my spirit. For all the Pentecostals, you've heard it this way. It's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We need the power of God at work in our lives if we're going to change. How does the Spirit help us change? Well, one, we got a new, like, transformation and real change requires new thinking. You can't change by focusing on an action. You can't. I've heard people say, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week. Three days. I'm doing it. First week, they do it. Second week, how many times you go? Two times. The next week, one time. The next week, they're just driving by the gym three times in a week. <laughs> because it's hard to just change. Some of you are trying to stop cussing. Like, I need to stop. Some of you are like, I'm trying to stop drinking, smoking. There, there's all kinds. I don't even need to give you the whole list. Lying. Hopping in DMs when you married. You know what I'm saying? Like, you... you you got some things, like you got a digital life that needs to get right. And you know it. And you're focused on that, but you can't change that. Why? Because you're, you're looking at it the wrong way. Real change requires new thinking. New behaviors are built upon new beliefs. You got to change the belief. You got to change how you think. Because your womb or your, your mind is the womb where your future is conceived. Like what you're thinking about creates your future. It attracts that to you. This is a law that God put. Scripture says, watch how you think. Your thoughts control your life. Ephesians 4, Paul's saying all this stuff like, hey, listen, don't act like your old self. Like, don't, don't, that, that, that's the old you. And he always says this after he reminds them 
hey, you've been crucified with Christ. Hey, you've been forgiven. He, he's reminding them of who they are in God. And he's like, hey, quit, quit going back to that stuff. And verse 23 says, your thoughts and attitudes must be constantly changing for the better. Yes, you must be a new and different person, holy and good. Clothe yourselves with this new nature. So you got to change how you think. Because you're either thinking God's way or you're thinking the world's way. Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world or the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then... When your mind is renewed, what happens? Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. What's God's will for my life? It's good. It's pleasing. It's perfect. So you can't be transformed as long as you remain conformed. Some of you got some bugs in the system and you're not accepting the update. Because Christians sadly think no differently than unbelievers. That lets me know we don't understand salvation. Christian divorce rate, same as non-believing divorce rate. We treat relationships like the rest of the world. We cohabitate just like everybody else now. It's like accepted. What is that? I'm not trying to make you, if, you're, if you are living together right now and you're not married, God is not blessing your, your relationship. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to say to you? That you're a good person, so therefore God just like says, oh, you know what, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> I am the Lord and I change not. I'll, I'll preach this church down to about 20 people. If you're, if you're shacked up right now, get married. Any of our pastors will marry you free of charge right up here in the office anytime during the week. Just go get the paper. Well, we don't need no paper. Then go get one. If it ain't no big deal, just go get one. No, it makes it binding when you get the paper. It makes it legal. Don't be saying we don't need no paper. Brother will keep saying that as long as you let him, girl. I'm gonna tell you, she, he gonna, as long as long as long as he keeps you. Hey, hey, girl, we don't need no paper, girl. Just go ahead. We don't think about relationships any different than the world. There are Christians today that think that this gender thing, like it's all, it's all fluid. Christians. What does God think about that? Read the Bible. Male and female, he created them. I don't really know what more we need to talk about. Does God love everybody? Yes. Don't take it to a place I ain't taking it. God loves everybody. We love everybody. Everybody's welcome in this church because we know there's enough right about Jesus to fix anything that's wrong in any of us. And the Holy Spirit can change people. We don't think about money the way God thinks about money. What am I saying here? We don't think about life from God's perspective. 1 Corinthians 3 says what the world considers to be wisdom is nonsense in God's sight. The last time the world was in this bad of shape, God sent a flood. Thank God for the rainbow. You know, the rainbow actually means it's a promise. It's been hijacked by a group of people, but it's a symbol that God says, I'll never destroy the world again. It's a beautiful symbol that God, God ordained. Aren't you grateful for God's mercy and God's grace that he still allows us to be here, gives us another chance. He has long suffering. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the world's way, it's not God's way. It's not God's way. So we got to let the spirit change the way we think. Secondly, we got to let the spirit bring us new truths. So real change requires new truths. John 8, 32, then you will know the truth and the 
Truth will set you free. How many of you have heard people say, the truth will set you free, brother? No, it won't. It's the truth you know that will set you free. The truth that you act on in faith that will set you free. The truth that you fully embrace, not halfway embrace, fully embrace. That's what's going to set you free. And if the Son will set you free, you are free indeed. That's what Jesus does. But we may believe that Jesus is right and the Bible and God's word is right. We just don't always believe it's real. You know what's real? Our past. Because we were there. Our experiences. And the devil will create that and say and use that and, and deceive us into saying, no, this is who you are. This is what is real. We have to begin to say, no, no, that's not truth. Where is truth? John 17, the night of his betrayal, Jesus prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, he, he said, Father, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. God's word is truth. Let God be true and every man be a liar. What that means is God is always true. He never lies. There is no lie in God. There is no darkness in him. He's always telling the truth. In John chapter 1, it says that the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. Jesus, the visible image of the invisible God, the word, he is the word, he came to live with us. So when I open up the Bible, when you open up the Bible... You're not reading it because you ought to. Well, I need to, I need to read the Bible. Yeah, we, we, probably, we all need it. But that, our motivation is I'm spending time with Jesus. I'm spending time with Jesus. I'm spending time because I need him to speak to me. I need... I, I need this word which is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's not just the Bible that's guiding me. It's Jesus guiding me. Amen. Helping me understand which decision to make. Relationship decisions. Job decisions. Things I need to do with my children. Jesus starts showing me. He starts showing me a better way. And the more I look at Jesus, the more I begin to look like Jesus. Come on, the more I spend with him, the time I spend with him, the more I think like him and act like him and talk like him. Why? Because he is transforming me. Because remember, as I behold, I become. Are, are y'all getting this today? It's like, it's really that simple. I'm learning new truths. Because here's what I know, behind every self-sabotaging behavior is a lie, a lie that you're believing. It's a lie. Well, if I want to be happy, I got to look over here for it. If I want to be fulfilled, I got to go over here. If I want to be somebody, I need to have these, these items in my wardrobe. I, you know, all these things you start. It's just lies after lie after lie. And we're believing them and we're wondering why we're getting the results that we're getting. Come on, we need the truth. Come on, somebody say, I need the truth. I need my, I need my imagination to be illuminated. I need it to be illuminated. When people are telling me, he's like, well, pastor, you know, let's just go back to the simple one because it probably affects the most. I need to quit cussing. Yeah, you probably should. You know, I'm not too worried about it, though. I don't care if you cuss. Keep cussing. <laughs> cuss as much as you want. But you get your face in God's word every day and spend time with Jesus. You become a worshiper. You start spending time in prayer with Jesus. Not that you're doing these things, but you just you start looking to Jesus with your life. Start guarding what you're watching on social media. You start going after the different things, the things of God. Here's what I, here's what I promise you. I promise you. Those words will work them, their, themselves right out of your vocabulary. And you're like, you'll get mad and you'll be like, Oh, man, that hurt. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You drive down the highway and say, Lord, Lord bless you. <laughs> it, it, it'll change. It'll change because now no, I'm, a, I, I'm getting some new truths on this. My imagination has been illuminated. I'm not an addict. 
I'm not that. I am not a loser. I am not damaged goods. I am a blood-bought child of the most high God. God has a plan for my life. I'm blessed. Come on, I'm anointed. I'm more than a conqueror. I've been given authority over the devil. I am accepted by Christ. I am seated with him in heavenly places. You start seeing, okay, this is what God says about you. What are you going to believe? What mirror are you going to look at? My mirror is my maker. My maker is my mirror. Real change requires new community. Can, can I get personal with you? Some of y'all got, y'all have community, but the community you have isn't conducive to what God wants to do in your life. But these are my friends. Look at this verse, Proverbs 13, 20. Keep company with the wise, you'll become wise if you make friends with stupid people. That's what the Bible says. It's a good news translation. I like this one right here. If you hang out with stupid people, you will be, your, your life will be ruined. Some of y'all are one relationship away from a changed life. You need people in your life that are moving in the same direction. And can I be honest? We got church all mixed up. Part of it is on the church for the way the church has promoted itself because we promote it like an event or a building. That's not what it is at all. Do you know we're called the body of Christ? Do you know that we're called the family of God? The flock of God? Are you, are you seeing it's an organism? It's a family it's living. Ephesians 4 says this. Look here, verse 25. What this adds up to then is no more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Now, what's he talking about here? Because he's like, hey, man, we're, we're, we're all connected in God's body, but stop lying. Like, why is he putting those two subjects together because some of you are like I never lie I always tell the truth <laughs> you lie <laughs> hey man how you doing I'm good fine been around if you're kind of churchy you give this response I'm too blessed to be stressed You know, cussed out all the kids on the way to church. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to hide. You say that until your kids start telling what's going on in your house. <laughs> like, don't you, don't you talk about our business outside this house. Some of y'all, some of them kids looking at their parents. They're like, I heard that one before. <laughs> Where do you find people like this? You find them in the body of Christ. You find, you, like, to the level of, of your honesty that you're willing to get with somebody, that's the level of healing that you'll find and the level of wholeness that you'll live in. So James 4, it says, confess your faults to one another, your flaws, your faults, and you will be healed. We go to God for, heal, for forgiveness. We go to God's people for healing. So we need the right connections. God can't bless, bless the fake you. Some of you have an addiction that you've never told anybody about. Nobody knows. It's dangerous. Some of you are battling things in your mind that you've never spoken to anyone else about. Why is that? Why do we hide that? Because we have a tendency to want to look better than we really are. And that's what the devil will do. He'll, he'll, and then when you lie, you convince yourself. You lie to yourself. Okay, I'm really okay. But, and, and everything about that doesn't even seem right. Karen and I lead a small group. And I love the people in the small group. And some of them have been in services today. But I'll say this, as I've said all day long. Not everybody was being honest. Everybody's still trying to look good. Why? One reason I'm there. One guy wouldn't even come. He just straight up told his wife, I'm not going if pastor's going to be there. <laughs> like, bro, Jesus already knows yeah. that you're a weirdo. 
and there's nothing you can do that would surprise me. I've been doing this long enough. They ain't not, there, there's no one in this room that could surprise me with your level of foolishness. I, can you believe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the same happen to the same guy three, three weeks ago. I just, because we're imperfect human beings. So we got to work on creating a space, even in our group, where people feel like, okay, I can, I can take the mask off. I can finally start talking about some things that I'm dealing with. I don't have to be afraid because I'm ready to change. I'm ready to grow. I'm, re- I'm, ready, to, I'm ready to be the person that God says I can be. I really want to live out this thing. I, I, I really want to. I don't want to just say I believe in something. No, I want it to affect my whole life. I, I, I want to get whole. I, I'm, some of y'all, you're going from one relationship to another. You need a small, you need someone to look at you and say, hey, man, stop doing that. Some of you, there's some men in here right now that you've got something with your digital device. You're like, I wish I had someone to talk to. You won't even leave your phone in the room with your wife. She pick it up, you'd be like, oh my God. What? <laughs> you changing your password every three days. Karen knows every password to every device, every account. She can go on at any time. And if you're, if you're wise guys, let your wife have your phone. Any guy, any guy that won't let his wife see his phone can't be trusted. I ain't trying to cause problems in this church, but I will, I will kick a hornet's nest. <laughs> Let's stir this thing up a little bit. And if you don't come back and you get mad, you're only hurting yourself. God's trying to heal you. And you're hiding. You want to be a man? Come to, I had said this all day. You want to be a man of God? Own up to what's been going on. Ask God for forgiveness. Humble yourself with your wife. Get on a path of reconciliation. We got pastors and leaders in this church that will coach your marriage and nurse your marriage back to health. But as long as you hide, it'll never be what God wants it to be. And someday, mama going to find the password. Because <laughs> what is done in secret is always brought into the light. And that goes for the ladies, too. Y'all better share that password. Carrie, I want to look at your phone when we get home. I'm not asleep on the job. We, we, we got we to get, get around the right people, encourage, build each other up. We need it. We need it. Here's the last thing. Real change requires a new identity. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a, say it with me, new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Old things have passed away. The old you. Bye. That promiscuous you, bye. That lying you, passed away, dead. Are you, are, did you read that? Are we making this up, or do do we believe the do we believe, do we believe God's word? Yes. Oh, oh, things have passed away. Behold, behold. I always think it should be said like that. Behold. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. All <laughs> things. Have become new. God removes your sin, but he doesn't erase your memory, does he? That's your responsibility. To behold Christ. Stop believing the lie of who you, like, you're not even that person anymore. Listen, next time you're, listen, there's people in here that are battling things. The next time you're tempted to go somewhere, to do something, to take something, to somewhere in your mind. The next time you get there. You know what you need to tell yourself? I don't even want that. That part of me is dead. That, 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 that's dead. I have been crucified with Christ. That's where it's at. I know it's a little bit deeper. I know it's a little bit deeper. You may not have all the feels. I can't tell you how many things God's helped me overcome. There have been times I've been short with people, you know. I'm a type A leader. But I want to be a Jesus type A leader. And at times I've been short, and I was like, you know, that ain't right. And then I won't, I'll say, God, forgive me. That's not who I am. Uh, That's not me. 
And I have a confession sheet that I, I read through weekly. And it says thing about Josh is patient leader. He's a kind leader. Anointing. Like, don't identify with your issues. Don't put that label on yourself. No, I'm a child of God. I'm accepted in Christ. I'm loved by God. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am united with Christ. You know what that means? That means God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. God doesn't love Jesus any more than he loves you. You are a child of God. When you accept Christ into your life, you are forgiven of all wrongs. God chooses not to remember your sins against you. So therefore, we come into the presence of God boldly. Like a little kid busting in saying, Daddy, I need something. God, come on, I need you to, I'm coming right into your presence. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. God, thank you for the change you're, you're bringing about in our life. Lord, your word says one day, God, we're going to see you and we shall be like you. Because we will see you as you really are. But Lord, we pray right now that process would begin. God, that we look to you. And we're becoming more like you every day. More of your grace, more of your, your love, your strength, your power at work in our lives. We choose to believe the truth. We choose to look in a different mirror. We choose to believe what you say about us, God. That's who we are. And Lord, I thank you that you're bringing change and transformation into our lives as we position ourselves to receive more of your grace, to behold your glory, God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here and today you say, Josh, I need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm ready to open up the door of my heart to him. I want to pray for you. I want to embarrass you, but I want to know who I'm praying for. If that's you, on the count of three, lift your hand up right now. One, two, three, all over this place. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. God, God bless your hands going up all over the room. In the riser today, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Put your hand on your heart. Let's all pray this prayer together. I believe this is, can be a life-changing moment for you. This prayer said in faith. Say, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. I believe he's your son who died for me. He rose again and he's alive. Jesus, come into my life. I repent of my sins. I make you my Lord. I choose to follow you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, can we give the Lord a good hand clap and celebrate with some people? Thank you for joining us for Faith Family Online. We hope this service was a blessing and an encouragement to you. It's always an honor to have you worship with us from wherever you may be. If this is your first time joining us, we want to give you a special welcome. You can text the word FAITH to the number 55498 to connect with us and learn more. But don't stop there. You can join us in person every Sunday at any of our campuses. For more information on service times and locations, go to our website at myfaithfamily.org. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you soon.